we had a we had a show last week. It was only our second show, EXO Live, and the show was really uh, important to me because it was an expression of not just who I am, but where I'm trying to take EXO in the future. And the comment section was very interesting for the show, and I felt a couple of things as I was reading the comments. One was the title was throwing people off. So before the show even aired, there was a comment about our promoting alcohol consumption, and it was a misunderstanding of where we were headed with that that program. And I get that; uh, it, it's it's obviously a trigger word. the The show really wasn't about alcohol; it was about wine and the incorporation of wine as a celebratory or romantic uh, effort for you and your spouse to come together over a glass of wine, bottle of wine, understanding how to incorporate that into your marriage. EXO is an ever-growing, uh, you know, idea and evolution of, of, a, of, a, of a passion that I have to see marriage expressed, not just whenever people are in crisis. And I think in the comments section, it felt like people see EXO as a hospital where we're only helping married couples. And I see EXO as a city where we have a lot of different facets to what we do. We do have, I don't even want to use the word hospital, but we have a place for hurting couples. But I don't want people just to think about XO when they're hurting. I want to be able to incorporate XO into everyone's marriage, no matter where they are, and to be able to have fun expressing this idea of couples coming together, whether it's at a conference, whether it's date night ideas, or whether it's talking about wine, which I have absolutely zero regret for anything that was presented last week on the show. I just don't feel like, really from, from my perspective, I did a good enough job of expressing what we're trying to accomplish here. Sometimes you're just never gonna win on these situations. And for that reason is why I took down the episode because it just wasn't something I was willing to you know, have it foster this sense of, of negativity. I, mean, I, I, I believed in it, I, I believe it was done with taste and class uh, I just thought he was really good so I, I just I wish um, we didn't remove it that would be my opinion because I think it's needed I think it's I think it was an, a good episode to air and it does you talked about you want to see what EXO is about and want to see about who we are that's who we are that's exactly who we are yeah uh, we have some of our EXO team here uh, talking through some things I wanted to talk about uh, as we pivot uh, just like Pivot Ross up. and Joey. <laughs> Pivot to uh, Kalamazoo. Yes. Axel Kalamazoo. So Ego, short for Eric Gomez, one of the one of the coolest COOs on the planet. Thank you. Uh, he just got back from Kalamazoo this weekend. And I'll just give everyone an update of what, where we are, what, what we experienced this weekend, how was it, everything. All everything, of it. all of it. Um, well, it was our first time there. It's uh, Kalamazoo. We went to Radiant Church. Uh, Pastor Lee and Jane Cummings uh, hosted it. Uh, they have a fantastic church. It is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. There are cornfields. There's a lot of greenery. It does not look like Texas. Everything's still green. It's, it's a good time you're to be there. Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely. And so we had a good time. We had a, a sellout. Uh, we added seats to accommodate some of the people that wanted to go. I think we were up to, uh, you know, uh, 1,200 people there. Um, it was great time of course anytime you bring you bring our co uh, collection of speakers so we had Dave and Ashley Willis uh, you know uh, we had Jimmy and Irene Rollins Sean and that Reed uh, it was just really fun it was a great time to get everyone back together the band back together um, so really was neat that the the demographic was different too uh, just seeing the different people we had um, uh, a group we had a, a, a group of Amish people mm -hmm. uh, and they were so nice I got to talk to them in the store and they had actually driven uh, to Pittsburgh. So they said it was, uh, you know, any, like any horses? No, no carriages. No carriages. They didn't have to. I don't think so. But it would have been a little bit longer trip. Uh, but they actually went out to Pittsburgh and then they learned that there was one in Michigan. So they came and brought more people. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a big group. It was awesome. It was really good to, to get to talk to them. They were the first people to go to the meet and greets to meet Jimmy and Irene Rollins. They were the first people to buy books. They were just all in. It was really neat. That's awesome. Uh, and so it was a lot of fun to get to meet them. Um, a lot of couples there, uh, a lot of younger people. I felt like there was a, a, huge, a, a large number of young people 
I saw we also had a lady who was single. Uh, we that, actually yeah. you see that we put it on our EXO marriage um, Instagram a story. Uh, you know, she's EXO marriage conference single. Uh, and so she went because she had, the team talked to her and said that she was just trying to prepare, just trying to, you know, take it's it all. That's what we in. want. That's what we want. Yeah. People it, to come, no matter if they're married or not married, just to learn. Yes. About that's how to. she was. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so she was excited. She was excited to be there. Uh, great people. We had, uh, of course, you know, some uh, friends, the Sissiotis were there. Uh, oh, they were? Yeah, they made it there. Right. We got to hang out with them for a little while. Um, and so. Are they in Grand Rapids? They, I believe. I believe they're, uh, they're maybe in Detroit. Detroit, yeah, they're yeah, further. Yeah. I think they're further out, a couple hours away. They have family that lives local, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. So we got to visit with them. It, um, it was great. It was a fantastic event. Uh, we had the Lakeland X, and so if you missed, uh, if you've missed out this year, uh, Lakeland, Florida. Yeah, we'll be there in a couple weeks. Great. We're we're excited about that. So Eric is is here. Maggie. Hi. Hello. Hello. And Joni Smith is also here. And then Taiwan is over here to my left. So Taiwan, big news coming from your camp. Yeah. I just wanted to pause and say I'm excited that I've gotten promoted to being on the camera this time. Whatever. Every other episode, I've been just kind of hidden the corner, and I just felt some type of way about it. Yeah, you moved up. Congratulations. Got a promotion. Yeah, we got a, we've got a, a, a yellow belt in the back. There we we're, go. We're, we're moving you up myself. the rank. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, no, but she just got engaged. I did. Talk about that. So you work for a, a marriage ministry, yeah. and you got engaged. Was there unicorns and, and rainbows around everything? Was it better? Actually, uh, Pastor Jimmy serenaded us as we walked around That's the right, lake. That's right, he did. It was, it was fantastic. And the mariachi uh, band? Was the mariachi it? band. Eric Gomez sang lead. It was fantastic. But no, <laughs> um, it's funny. We were talking about the Amish. We actually went out to Lancaster in Pennsylvania, where it's like super Amish. Yeah. They make fantastic ice cream, by the way. Uh, but we went, we went out there. Uh, there was a place she used to play as a kid uh, under this willow tree, so it was perfect. And we got engaged under the willow tree. Good for you, man. You know? That's awesome. Congrats. Now we're in the thick of it. Wedding planning. Yeah, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for last week, we'd open a bottle of champagne and celebrate, but it's too soon. <laughs> it's too soon. We may be, we may be taken down Bottled for that Bottled water one. for everyone. That's right. Bottled water. There it is. That's right. We'll just, do, we'll just do Topo Chico's in line. Mm. Okay, so a little, little trivia. So Joni Smith and I, we grew up together in Amarillo. Her cousin, Aaron... Got married to a girl from Lancaster. It's the only yeah. time I've been to Lancaster. Yeah. And we were at uh, his in-law's house, you know, preparing for the wedding. And it's Amish country up there. And then there's a lot of distance between houses. But there was like an Amish, I wouldn't say community, it's a family. But they were all sunbathing nude out in the distance. So they they know how to party and yeah. they know how to it's live it's life, I guess. Way. The Amish are, they're interesting. And then you get behind one in a buggy, horse and buggy, and you just want to... <laughs> Okay, I may be uncultured. Did y'all know that their buggies have turning signals on them now? I don't even know how that no, works. I didn't know that. Are they wood burning? I have no signals? idea how it works, but they have turning signals nowadays. Oh, They've no. revolutionized. Don't sleep on the Amish. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know? Don't sleep on the Amish. Sounds like a Weird Al Yankovic song. It does. Okay. So today we want to talk about uh, some updates from EXO. We also have a couple of books coming out here. Fighting for the Soul of Your Child coming out this week. Married into the Family, which is an in-law book, came out last week, which I think is a super important book to remember how to deal with in-laws. And, of course, I wanted to bring back The Four Laws of Love, which is one of the best marriage books on the planet. And uh, this is from Jimmy Evans as well. And so any, any book that you need in your library, we have it, whether it's marriage, in-laws, parenting. But brand new this week is Fighting for the Soul of Your Child and... If we had confetti, I would say we're launching Exo Parenting this week, which we're super excited about. And it's a very important topic for, for where we are in society. And as a dad of three kids, a parent myself, I feel like the parenting space is just, it's just ripe for the right information, which is what we're trying to provide through Exo Parenting. Yeah, your dad at, at this, uh, so Hasha Jimmy uh, also was in Kalamazoo. I left him out earlier. Um, but when on his last message, he did the, um, you know, the uh, generational type legacy, and he does that one on iniquities and talking about generational type curses and stuff. And I don't think I realized how much of it impacts your parenting. Yeah. And so he went into a little bit deeper this past one in Kalamazoo. It was maybe one of my favorite messages mm -hmm. by your dad. Mm -hmm. It just talks about just how, you know, those those iniquities, and you don't want uh, to give your your parents' iniquities that you picked up and then pass them down even further. 
And so it was such a good lead up to a parenting. Uh, I'm hoping he does it again in Lakeland. Uh, there were, we had some people that were in the back room and there were, I didn't even realize I had an iniquity. I didn't realize that when I responded or reacted to my kids, that it was something that my mom, that I, I made an inner vow that I would never do something and I did it. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's just enlightening. And so I'm really excited for Excel Parenting, especially for this book that we just released. You know, I just watched, and this is interesting that I watched it yesterday. Jake Paul, I'm not going <laughs> to oversell Jake Paul, but there's an untold on Netflix, oh, this own told so series good. It's a good one. It's about good. Jake Paul. And I'm just going to admit, I, I kind of stayed out of that whole world. I just, I'm not a Swifty, mm. so I don't, I can't relate to that, even though we'll talk about Taylor Swift <laughs> and Travis Kelsey uh, a little later on. You know, this whole idea of Jake Paul being a fighter from a YouTuber to a fighter, I was only a headline knower of that storyline. Like mm-hmm. I was not in, in the, in the know fully. So I watched this documentary and I mean, I was, I was really impressed mm-hmm. with Jake Paul. But one of the things you'll notice in that storyline is their father. Did y'all watch that? Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The father was absolutely responsible for a lot of Jake's feelings and mm-hmm. frustrations and anger. And there was a moment, so they talk about it. These, these two kids from Ohio started you know, recording themselves on camera way before even YouTube was popular. Mm-hmm. And they were, they were fortunate that they had each other. Mm-hmm. But one of the things early on they talked about in the interviews was when they were growing up, their father would be abusive to them mm-hmm. and physically abusive. And their father was on camera being interviewed, and he was sort of you know, playing it off like, oh, well, I mean, I always tell people, if you want a better kid, just send them to me for two weeks, and they'll, and they'll be a better kid. And the boys would say that, you know, that he just physically assaulted them. And... The dad was saying, well, it turned them into the men they are today, so I don't know why they're complaining. Mm-hmm. This is all on camera. And then further on, as they th- tell the story of Jake, Paul, and him kind of coming into the YouTube world and becoming, and his bro- him and his brother had a rivalry on YouTube, mm-hmm. like who has the most likes, who has the most views, and who's more successful. And then at some point, they got propositioned to have this fight mm-hmm. with another YouTube couple of guys from UK and that's that prompted this whole boxing thing and then you just watch because you have the footage from YouTube and you have the footage from all of these like camera angles and then you have them telling the story it's a really crazy world we live in just the depth of you know mm-hmm. angles you have of people's lives now and you watch him go deeper and deeper into the boxing world and that anger from his father and that frustration from his childhood coming out so much that at some point he's sitting in one of the, the green rooms. What do they call it in the boxing world? I guess they call it a green room, training rooms, waiting for the fight. And his dad is there, and he's trying to talk to Jake, and Jake's kind of in his own world. And then Logan Paul mm-hmm. kind of brings his dad aside and says, hey, did y'all work it, did y'all work it out? And his dad was like, no, but, we, you know, we're kind of we're, we're trying to get back, you know, kind of into – he said, I'm trying to make it normal again. And then Logan said, why don't you just tell him you love him? It was just so simple. And the dad just couldn't. He didn't even register. Didn't yeah. even register. And you could see it in his eyes. He was like. Yeah. And parents play a big part in, in your kids' lives. And he's d- again, the dad would say, he's a boxing machine because of whatever I put yep. inside of him. you know." But that's, that's an unhealthy look at parenting. And you have to be willing to see your kids as human beings at some point. And, and they're, they're really in the thick of it. And I, you know, shout out to Jake Paul for, I think he was six and one at the end of the, yeah. the documentary. It was actually really, I loved it. Riveting. That was one of my favorite ones. Cause I really didn't have an appreciation for them. I mean, I, mean, I always thought they were just kind of clickbait, yeah. you know, kind of, you know, Hey, pay-per-views, they're going to fight some people. Um, but when you watch it, your, your heart breaks for him. Like you, you watch it and you're like, Oh my goodness. Like this guy, he did not have the childhood that anyone would want. Uh, and so as you watch it, and, you, and the big brother, right, he, the big brother wants to help him out, and he's trying to protect them. Like you said, whenever they're going through that feud, the two brothers, um, I think Logan kind of came back around and said, I'm going to help you out where I can. It's just sad. And the, the dad's clueless. The dad mm-hmm. was completely clueless. I mean, that's the, the, the only way you can say it. As he's looking at the camera, he's, like, telling his story and how he helped develop them. It's just heart- heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Yeah. I thought a huge takeaway was like 
that relationship he had with his brother, you know, like the importance of mm -hmm. like having your siblings and having this like community and group around you that like help foster you and lift you up. And like his his brother was fighting for him mm -hmm. to his dad and like the dad was clueless, but like having a sibling that will fight for you, like that is so important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, the the whole sibling world is is fascinating. And whenever you're in the limelight like that and your whole world is because you hear Jake Paul and Logan Paul. <laughs> and I was in my office watching it yesterday, and Luke and Reed walked by. They were going to another room, and they would just stop and go, wait, is that Logan Paul? <laughs> the guy who did Prime? I think I'm from Prime now, you know. Or Jake Paul is a YouTuber, so they know. Wait, is that Jake Paul? So they recognize him. And for me, as a dad, I'm like, do I want my kids to know these guys? <laughs> you know, but they're, you know, they're, they're a representation of, life and in the documentary they show don king because yep. uh, he's a big promoter i mean don king was a figure when i was growing up you yes. know and they're no different than don king yeah. don king i wouldn't say is a reputable person in in the character sense but you really have to give it to them that mm -hmm. those guys knew how to sell a fight yeah and they knew how to put it all together oh yeah. they definitely did yeah. i think i do it brings up a question though for you three per se when you're looking at that story and his dad's kind of telling the story of how like he's a part of why they have that grid in them now. And now we're looking at today where there's this huge trend of gentle parenting. Like where do y'all fall in that, that kind of row of like not being so hard that your kid feels like they can't communicate with you, but not also being like this gentle parenting where it's like, he can do whatever he wants. He's, he's learning, he's, he's growing or X, Y, Z. I'm just curious to hear y'all's opinion on, in that area. Uh, a lot of trial and error. I, I think the big one is moderation. I think you can't go into any kind of like moment with your kiddos like out of anger. I think that's the, ki the the kicker for me is I remember it was about 2011 around there. So that would have been, I would have been like early 30s at the time with my kids was I, I realized that it was more of my responses to them were out of anger as opposed to I, w I want to make you better. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and so I had to actually take a pause in that. But I mean, we spanked, uh, you know, we were that family that, you know, we spanked our kids. We didn't, you know, use that as a uh, every day or anything because then it kind of loses its uh, uh, it, I want to say it's kind of like his effectiveness. Yeah. And so, uh, but we, it's really definitely just kind of like moderating it, making sure that you're not doing it out of anger and that they understand that usually we use that kind of, it was a consequence. It wasn't necessarily, it wasn't because it was, we're trying to coach you. It was because we gave you a set rule. We gave you a, 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 a something, not a boundary. You went past that boundary. You went, or was, and then we gave a consequence to it as opposed to, uh, you didn't do, you know, we're, we're coaching you so you get some kind of abuse. So what it sounded like with the boys, with the with the pause, was it, it was like daily. Mm -hmm. it, it sounded like it was, I, if it wasn't a, a physical, it was a verbal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so. With no with no back into it to say, you know, I love you. This is why yes, I did it. So. Uh, reinforcing values. And it it's so easy as a parent to give a lot of, um, give, give a lot of false, you know, um, you, you say you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, mm -hmm. and so you're giving you're giving because you don't want to spank your kid. You really don't. I mean, if you're a good parent, it hurts your heart to spank. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. You know how important it is in dealing with the consequence and following through th through. It's important. I think for me, it's that balance of every kid's different. They're getting older. What meant made sense back in the day mm -hmm. is is not necessarily always just the, the go to. Um, a spanking for my boys who are 11 and 9 makes a lot of sense sometimes, but sometimes it's just not the right solution, and it's trying to figure out that balance. Both of them, one of them, I can spank them once, and he's acting like I just completely filleted him, you know? <laughs> and then the other one, I can give him two hard swats, and he'll just look at me like, okay, is that it? I mean, it's testing yeah. every yeah. bit of my manhood, right, right. not to be yeah. like, okay, Challenge. all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn, you know, what's the breaking point for both. But the, the idea is, and this is what I have a conversation with them about it afterwards, is I don't want to do this. I'm letting you know that this is going to be the consequence if you continue to repeat that behavior. So mm -hmm. the idea is you don't repeat that behavior. And then hug them, love on them. Uh, my daughter, who's 16 now, the conversation for consequences looks, looks a lot different. It's, 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 and it's also as she's 16 and um, you've got Blessed who's 15, right. you know the, the 
shift in moods and the, the mood swings can be fairly, fairly, um, you know, it's actually. <laughs> yeah. We're waiting, Brent, for that yeah. adjective. Well, <laughs> we're going to fill in there. Just careful. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <out> there. <laughs> Very, um, we're, we're yeah. waiting. Say? We're waiting. <laughs> it doesn't sound like Logan Paul's dad, It was he was even approachable on the subject. Mm -hmm. It was just a closed door. Like, there was no adaptability. So mm -hmm. as, like, a parent, like, I, I totally agree with you, Brent. Like, you have got to treat each child as their own and what works with one is, like, you know, I only have one. Um, and so, like, Blessed, of which, just sidebar, like, Jimmy is responsible for Blessed's name. We won't get into her uh, testimony there, but, like, Jimmy Evans is responsible for naming my daughter Blessed. And so, like, mm -hmm. as you can say, like, the Beatitudes and Matthew, Blessed means happy. Mm -hmm. She's a happy girl for sure. But I remember when she was, like, six months old, she was just, like, reaching for a socket. Um, and I was like, Blessed, no! You know, I was, like, shouting. And um, she just looked at me. And it's like when you get a little shot to a little kid, they're, like, silent. And then all of a sudden, just, like, the wail is like, yeah. Wah! So I was like, oh, I've got a sensitive. I've got a sensitive person with a big heart. And so, like, you adapt. Uh, but... Um, when I hear those stories about, you know, Logan Paul and his dad, it's just, it grieves me because, yes, your childhood does shape you, of course, but parents have that stewardship and that responsibility to take that gift that was given to them and raise them to their highest potential. What, what more could Logan and his brother mm -hmm. be, they right, be, yeah. right yeah. if they would have had that more supportive um, environment? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And as a sidebar, I know you mentioned this earlier, Brent, that you and I have known each other for a while. Um, but we have, we have, truth be told. And like, here's evidence right here. Uh oh. So, oh um, my goodness, please. Oh, okay. oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, like, there is Brent, Brent Lee Evans, right there. That's right. Yeah. Oh. So, this is us in the eighth grade. I. And, and then I'm up, I don't know what I'm sporting, like my mouth there. I don't even it's know. It's like that creepy half open. Which one? Yes. Mouth. So, I'm like, uh, on the right. To the right. Which she's stretching out her leg. Oh, yeah, stretching out my leg. Oh, that yeah. is yeah. you. Yeah. So, that's me. Yeah. So we can talk about what look I have on my face later, but so that's how long. That's how big the class was. You go. went to a class. If yeah, you went to a big <laughs> school, that's <laughs> the <laughs> entire <laughs> class basically right there uh, at Trinity Fellowship. Go Lions. Go Lions. Is go that Lions. the Zach Morris? Character? There it is. Yep. Is Saved by the that? Bell. Yep. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, I was probably oh, is so thinking good. about how I could, um, I don't know, do something wrong that day. I was a weird kid. Uh, it's funny. Yeah, we go way back. Go so. Lions. The, the days of, of high school, which seems so far, you know, long gone, um, you know, now that my daughter's in those, that world, you go back and go, well, how, how was I feeling right then? Mm -hmm. And I turned out a certain way. And you're trying to evaluate things, not just yeah. based upon, you know, the current moment, but giving kids room to be themselves enough. The, the hard part about today is, like with phones and with, you know, the, the dangers of, of everything that's going on is you really just don't want your kids to make that one mistake that yeah. they can so easily do that will affect their lives forever. I mean, like, that's, that's a, I mean, think about if video cameras were around <laughs> back when I was in <laughs> high school, that, that, that lives on yeah. in, a, in an internet world forever that you really just can't ever run from. And you you were just prone to do dumb stuff back then that you got away with. Now that stuff is is very very easily easily recorded and put online or whatever it is, and it's hard to and you just want it, you don't want that for your kids. And no, the stakes are high. Yeah, the stakes are much higher for for our children now than it, as it was for us back mm -hmm. in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just is and so now with everything, you know, it's what she said. Our kiddos are 18, 20, 26. and so. Um, you just want them to avoid that major catastrophe, you yeah. know. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. You're not going to make every right decision. But, you know, be careful with what you put out there online. What are those things? Funny story on uh, our son, Eli. So we gave him a steak one time. And the, the best was his best response ever was, I'm still happy. <laughs> oh, you can't break my spirit. No, you, you can't, can't break, break my spirit. spirit. <laughs> I was like... No, I'll never forget the last time I got, we don't call them spankings, we call them whoopings. So that was very yes. spanking and sweet. Yes. We got whoopings. The last whooping I got, my mom bent me over her knee and she she whooped me. And I just slid off and I started praying. And I was like, you can't beat a kid who's praying. It's, it's balls in your court. So <laughs> try it. <laughs> but I, I do think to your point, I had a question. Just someone who is not a parent and is closer to being on the younger age mm -hmm. and there. What degree of allowing us to experience and to learn on our own versus protection do would you say is the balance? Like, what does that look like? 
So how do I not get to a point where I'm 26 and I've been sheltered my entire life, but also I've had the, ex the, the room to experiment and to learn who I am without my parents. I think because that's where the line is now. I know a lot of 25 year olds who just left mom and dad's house and you're like, oh, you've never experienced the world. That's, that's wild. So like, what is that? How do you balance that in, in that tension? Because I think it's a tension to manage, but. Oh, it, it's constant right now. I know for, for us, I mean, like I said, we're empty nesters just for the last two months. And we're, we're seeing our kids uh, go out and we're trying to figure out what, like you said, what, what degree are we still involved in and what are we not involved in? Uh, now, Eli left last year, so we kind of had a little bit of experience with him mm -hmm. already before Gabby left. And so we, now we have this new role in their life as opposed to being this authorita authoritative voice. We're more kind of a guidance counselor. Yeah. Um, and so, but we did, we have looked back and said, oh man, we were helicopter parents in some way. Mm -hmm. That we've looked back and said, we were probably a little bit too involved. We could have given them a little bit more um, um, leniency, a little bit more opportunity to like you say, try that independence, try out different things. But you don't know until uh, until you're through it. Mm -hmm. And so I, for us, I think just kind of now we're in it. We're just talking to as many people as we can on what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. And then we figure out what our approach is through those conversations. And so uh, that's kind of right now we do realize we see it with a lot of a 20 year olds, uh, friends that we have with the family that are really struggling with. Well, they're not ready. They're not. They're just plain out not ready emotionally, yeah. spiritually. Uh, financially, yeah. they're just not ready. And so how do you create this independent, you know, uh, adult? Uh, and so uh, if you, if anyone else wants to write a book on that, maybe we need to figure that <laughs> out, Brent. Uh, but really, how do we do that? Because it is a, it is a major transition uh, for us right now that we're trying to figure out. Yeah, no, I, I agree. The, the idea that your kids can function without you, you know, at what age, and you know, Kate is 16 now, she can drive, and we are allowing her to take opportunities as much as she gives her gives us the confidence that she's able to take those opportunities and handle them maturely. Yeah. And to be able to drive from point A to point B with another person in her car, to show up on time, to get up and go do certain things. And she's been great, she's been getting up on Sunday mornings without us having to tell her to get up, going to church, volunteering, you know, being a part of, of the church community. And that's what really helps you understand that your kids are, are doing mm -hmm. well. Yeah. But even like right now, we have Life360 in our home. Life360 is awesome, but it's also Big Brother. And it's very it's a surveillance state if you're not careful. And so I, we have a group, a nuclear group with our immediate family. And then I have a another group where it's extended family and I have no problem with people knowing where I am. My life is very boring. <laughs> but, you know, my parents can look at where I am, <clears throat> and that's fine. But I, I told them, if you ever call me and say, hey, I noticed you were at so-and-so place, yeah. what are you doing? Then I'm going <laughs> to go to my settings. <laughs> Off. I'm going to yeah. remove myself. and Because it's one of those things where you just want you want to be a part of a family. You want that environment of inclusivity, and you yeah. want to be – you want to know your parents are around, but there's a difference between them fighting your battles for you and you fighting, fighting your own battles. And that's where it gets tricky because you don't want them to make a mistake, but they'll never get stronger if they don't walk through their own fire. Yeah. And you can't always be the firewall for them. It is so hard. <laughs> it is so it hard. Is, it is so hard. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I've heard this weekend alone talking to some friends, we just want it better for our kids. Yeah. I've heard that that quote unquote, at least three times this week from three different couples. Um, it is a battle out there oh, every yeah. day for your kids to help them, to protect them. But then at some point, you just have to trust that their faith and that you know what you the, what you deposited in is going to take them further, and they're going to start making they're going to make their own decisions and they're going to make those mistakes. Yeah. Um, and generationally speaking. It always seems to evolve, right? Like our grandparents in this room and what they had to do by the time yeah. they were two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> before they were even walking. Plow in the yeah. field. Yeah, you're like, exactly. you're a two-year-old. What are you doing? <laughs> right. And and so, like, what is it going to be like for our kids and our grandkids? Mm -hmm. um, because it, we need to keep the conversation fluid. Because yeah. it was very different oh, yeah, than yeah. what it is today. But even to y'all's point, I think you have to be very intentional. Because you, you do hear people say, I want better for my kid. I want better for my kid. 
But then you give them better, and now there's an expectation of who you were with your parents, and if you had had what you had, so now there's too much pressure, and your kid can't like live up to this expectation that you have. And that's something I've seen a lot also, is you're like, you'll hear your parent be like, yeah, I didn't have this, but you have this, and you're like, yeah, but you don't have X, Y, Z also happening too. Mm -hmm. So kind of balancing and like living in that space of like, Well, I, I, would, yeah. I would say that an easy way to get your kid acclimated to facing up to the real world is if they mess up, making them make it right. Yeah. You know, in, in school environments, all three of our kids have had situations where they've messed up, and we force them to go to either their teacher or to one of their friends, and they're the ones that have to own up to mm -hmm. it, make it right. You don't take that opportunity away from them to have to eat the meal that they just made themselves. Yeah. And sometimes that's difficult to watch them have to deal with certain things like that. But every one of those opportunities allows them to grow and to get better and to understand who they are. Just recently, just practically, you know, my son was wanting to play more quarterback in football. And I said, I, you know, you're, you're a sixth grader. Just go up to your coach and ask him if you can throw. I mean, like, it's on you. I can go ask him. Yeah. But – like that's not going to be helpful if I'm just always showing up asking him. And so in warm-ups, he went up to his coach and said, hey, do you mind if I throw some passes? And the coach was like, sure, go ahead. And I could just tell Reed was just more confident yeah. that he had gotten a yes. And, he if he got, and if he got a no, then that would have been fine too. At least he tried. Yeah. And he put himself out there. And, you know, and, and Reed's a good kid. He, he broke his arm two, almost two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Speaking of online, all the games in South Africa recorded – and so you can see the moment he broke his arm oh. and broke it on his left arm and both bones. And so his arm's just dangling there. And as a dad, you know, we had to go back and kind of watch kind of what happened. And, you know, your, your heart breaks for your son. But in the same way, you know, he's playing football. There's consequences for that. He'll get stronger yeah. from that. Mm -hmm. I wish I could take it back. I wish I had a time machine I could go back and take it. But now we're trying to walk with him through this opportunity. He's out for the season. He's not able to play football this season. It's hard. It's almost mm -hmm. a mourning period for him because he loved it. Yeah. And for us as a family, like what's what's important right now. And he's having to be on the sideline with the cast. And that's a good le learning lesson for him. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to take that opportunity away from him to grow in this process. Yeah. So we're trying to find even in the small times, you know, the, the moments where it doesn't feel great to learn from it and him to learn from it. And at the end of the day, I'm hoping he's stronger, stronger from it. He will. Yeah. yeah, and how much do you think social media plays into that? Like, kind of on your your, your original question here that we're that we're addressing, but you know, would a parent rather have their son go up and you know have a hard conversation, or would you rather present this exterior mm -hmm. um, persona that we have? Our family has it all together. Yeah, um, and you know, maybe that plays into what we're seeing some these days with mm -hmm. what parents are choosing to do and project of themselves and their family. Hmm. Yep. That was deep. Yeah, that was deep. I, I, that's a hard one because I mean Instagram is social and everything is just a highlight reel. Absolutely. Right? I mean it's not it's not the dirty laundry. It's not yeah. the, you know, it's not the, the late night argument or the late night disagreement at the table or the, hey, the, all the emotions of the, the roller coaster of teenagers or you know uh, young adults. Um, but you know I, I I can see the the the, the pressure that's created from that. Right. Um, and I think from you know from the from from our side of it, you know, I, I was a, I was not the model kid growing up. And so I, I fight so hard to protect my kids from not following those footsteps uh, to so much that, like, your dad talks about inner vowels. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, my son will never or my yeah. daughter will never, uh, as opposed to saying, Lord willing, I'm going to pray through this. How can I help them, equip them? You know, how can I walk them through this? And so, but I didn't say those prayers. I, I was just more of a this is not going to happen this way yeah you know and i even probably clapped at the same time <laughs> uh and so you know because it it makes makes it more real and so um i, I parenting is by far the for me the hardest thing on this planet mm -hmm. um marriage is is challenging you know taking two to one but parenting is 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 by far the hardest thing for me that i think we've ever done keisha yeah, and i it is because you you have these you little be little little people that you're responsible for that you hope don't grow up to be losers and i don't even know how else to say that <laughs> but, you know, you don't well want you want somebody else to tell you this but eli and gabby are amazing and they're older and eli's basically an, he is an adult yeah. and i can just tell you y'all won y'all are y'all are successful mm -hmm. parents and y'all have now two kids that are shining examples of y'all y'all as 
not just human beings because they're a part of y'all, but that as they're serving God, they're they're going, they graduated high school, they're going to college, you know, they're committed to doing like dating the right way, you know, adjusting to life the right way. They're their own people. Mm-hmm. But I would just tell you that they interned here this summer. I was super impressed with the Gomez kids. So y'all, you guys are you guys are winning. Good job, Erica they get a they get a Walmart trip at college next time we go. <laughs> That's right. Buy them snacks. <laughs> Whatever that endorsement means for them, you know the the the, the, the Evans seal of approval. There it is. Well, I uh, want to talk about a couple of things real quick. That the because uh, Maggie is dying to talk about oh. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Tay Tay. And I want to dovetail that into yes. something else. But so I would say that for me. If Taylor Swift was in the room, I could my my heart rate would not go up. I would not geek out. I would not be a fanboy because I think the only song that comes to mind is "We Were We Are Never Getting Back Together." That song, I couldn't I couldn't tell you. I know that if I heard her songs, I'd be like, "Oh, that's Taylor Swift song." But I'm not just downloading and listening Swifty. to all. I couldn't put myself in the Swifty category. I thought about that though, mm-hmm. and I thought if I ever probably dipped my toe in that water. I would probably it would be probably the world where in ten days I would resurface and I'd be like, Oh my gosh, God, y'all know that Taylor Swift <laughs> she has the most amazing personality. I just think she's amazing. The the world of, of Taylor Swift is not my world. Now football is and I like Travis Kelsey a lot. So seeing her yesterday in Chiefs Country rooting for him mm-hmm. and whenever he scored that touchdown, yeah, she, you could yeah. tell she was really going crazy. Well, she needs another album, and you know, she kind of dates yeah, and breaks up and gets a new album. So That's right. Seems about. Right. Seems yeah, about Jake Gyllenhaal got the worst of that. Oh, he did. <laughs> Are all the albums after a breakup? Not all of them, but a lot of them. Like I like, there's a song about Joe Jonas. There's a song about Taylor Lautner, uh, Tom Hiddleston. Oh, um. she's like a record. I mean, she like actually knows <laughs> this. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like a record. She gets around. She's like a comedian. Yeah, I'll yeah. go ahead and do this activity because I need the content. Yeah. Uh, but she just had a boyfriend for six years and they just broke up. Okay. And so, like, her newest album is somewhat about that, but nobody knows when the breakup happened, mm. so we don't know. So. Mm. Oh wow. But it's a mystery. Travis Kelsey, I don't know anything about him. So Travis Kelsey didn't he like throw football. out there that he was wanting, he mm-hmm. was open. Yeah, he shot his shot. Yes. Yeah. So and he went responded. to the Eras tour, and it's this whole thing to like make a friendship bracelet and like pass it with friends and people you meet and whatever. So he made one with his phone number on it to give to Taylor. And afterwards, he like didn't meet Taylor. So he came out and was like, I'm so bummed I didn't get to meet Taylor. Like, I had this friendship bracelet for her, like, whatever. And at that point, I don't think they had ever met. Um, but. She performed at Arrow, is it Arrowhead? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, which is like his home stadium. Mm. So he was like, I came and saw you rock the stage at Arrowhead. Why don't you come see me rock the stage at Arrowhead? And then all these rumors started happening. Nobody knew what happened. Um, and then all of a sudden yesterday, she yes, showed up at the game with his mom, and they left together, and it's just, it's a whole thing. So are they dating? Nobody knows. They're dating. On paper, Probably. it makes a lot of sense. It makes sense, yeah. yeah. You know, but, like, nobody knows if they're actually together. Like, they could just be friends, and it's just, like, this whole thing. If you watch the game, and he scored the touchdown, everybody in that stadium was rooting for him, and he was on he was on this big stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's been on that big stage. They both know how that feels like. They mm-hmm. could have a lot of commonality in the sense that everyone jocks them. Right. The, the side of what I feel like is – is weird is the fact that they're both so busy right now in their lives. Yeah, how she's still on up? her heiress tour. She's about to, she may still be in Mexico. She's about to go to Europe and travel to Europe. Then she goes to Canada and she's coming back to the U.S. next year. So I don't like, I don't it know how work, she though, would have isn't like That Carrie Underwood is married to uh, a hockey player, right? Oh, like right, she's yeah. She's a professional hockey mm-hmm. player. So, I mean, they work it out too. Um, He'd be busy as well for the next couple of months. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's going to be very busy. But I, what a bold move. Put your phone number on a oh bracelet. Yeah. That's drippy. Yeah. 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 All right. That's that kind of drippy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Taiwan came up with an article that was about, is it chic to divorce by 30? Mm. And since Maggie, you and Max have been married <laughs> for two years? Yes, in January it'll be two years. And Taiwan, you are getting married. Is there a date set? Yeah. 
Do we have day? to wait, wait another wait, 30 wait, days? Another 30 find days? Out what it is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're getting married December 31st. Oh, oh nice. there you go. That's perfect. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Isn't that when Lynette uh, Reed, who's on staff, her daughter, her, her daughter, daughter is her daughter's getting married, getting married on that yeah. same day? Same day. Mm-hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. Very easy to keep track of the The idea that it's chic, the, the commonality of divorce before 30, how do you process that as you, you are on the front side of that? Because I'm, I'm way past 30. <laughs> way past 30. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's tough just because if we really, really process where we are in the world, everything is if it's convenient for me. And I think we're just all being groomed now. You can see it in, from the, the scandals with the parents paying for their kids to get into college. To, like, if it's not convenient, it's not easy, then it's not right. And there's this whole thing that's really what the article is about. It's like, if you don't feel like it's the right person, just give up. And, and it's hard because you're like, that's literally the opposite of marriage. And it's really something funny. You can kind of see that when the trend of writing your own vows came up, that the divorce rate also went up oh, because really? you're no longer really making that vow of, Till death do us part. Mm. So that now it's like, good. oh, I just love you, and yeah. I want to be close to version. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's no grit to it anymore. That's something Jimmy Rollins says all the time. You got to have the grit to not quit. Mm. And we just don't have the grit. Yeah. As someone who is in the Gen Z millennial, we just don't have grit, mm-hmm. and you can see it. And that's what I think that's a part of a major translation into why you get a divorce. Because yeah, I want to love you when we're having sex and we're having fun and on Instagram, but then the moment where I have to be forced to grow. I don't want to do it anymore because mm-hmm. now you're the problem. Yeah. So I think that's, I think it's just a major, just us not having grit anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. we just don't. Yeah. As someone no, who's, I'm 24, so I'm, uh, I'm six, is that right? Six years from being mm-hmm. 30. Like, that just makes me so sad that, like, like the, the norm would be for me to get divorced in six years, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, that means our marriage lasted eight years and, like, we just have so much more life to live. We don't have kids. We have a dog. Um, but, like, there's so much more life to live in six more years. Yeah. And, like, to be expected expected to be divorced by then, like, that just breaks my heart. Because, like, mm-hmm. I love marriage, and it's so much fun, and I have so many things to look forward to. But to have that, like, pressure almost that, like, this is how it's supposed to be, and this is what you're supposed to do, like, like that's just so sad. Yeah, you know? I think the danger of it is is it puts that thought in people's head. Yes. Especially if they're before thirty and they're struggling in their marriage, and they read an article like that, or it was a it was a YouTube video yeah. that we watched, and it was some major influencer model that was talking about this. And if you're in that moment and you're watching her talk about the the seasonality of marriage, and you're struggling and you're frustrated and you're hurting, and you go, you know what? maybe she's right. Maybe I don't need to deal with this anymore. Mm -hmm. And it gives you that opportunity to take the off ramp whenever it really wouldn't have been there before had you not had that thought. And if you had somebody around you that was reinforcing, no, stay, like work it out, Mm -hmm. deal with it. The issue you're facing right now, you can overcome it. Because most of the time before you're 30, the issues are way less severe than they get whenever you've been married for 25 years and you have kids involved. And we talked about Hugh Jackman last week and his marriage. I thought Sam uh, did a good job of realizing that the kids had just reached, the the youngest was 18. So they probably were miserable and then they just waited for their kids to get older before they divorced. So many people do that. And it's unfortunate because the idea that your kids are not gonna have feelings at 18 versus younger than that. Yeah. Is, is ridiculous. They're going to be hurting no matter what. So you're just delaying the pain. But, you know, for, for a lot of people out there, the common wisdom of the world is sometimes brought to life through Instagram or clips. Yeah. And if you're in an unhealthy situation, you can take that as the gospel. And it can really lead to a lot of unfortunate divorces. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really... I'm glad Taiwan and Maggie are staying in the... <laughs> That's right. The, we're gonna the beat the it. Till we're gonna death beat to his it. part. Death to his part. I think yep. though you hit you hit on something that was really good that it's easy to pass over. Your community makes or breaks you. Oh yeah. Even in dating, mm-hmm. there'll be times when me and Chloe would get into a spat and I go to someone and they'd be like, Yeah, you're dating, just walk away. Like it's not a point. Yeah. And then you'd be like, you know what, you're right. I don't need to I don't have to stick around for this. Mm-hmm. But then I go to someone else and they'd be like, 
you're being childish. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, maybe mm-hmm. your community, like, makes or breaks oh, 100%. you. Oh, yeah, Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that, the, the top five people in your, f- I can look at five people closest to you and tell you where you're going to go. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Because you, you settle with whoever you're around. So I think, I think I thought that was But great. it's a mindset, too. Oh, like, yeah. So to your, to your point on if it's not easy, it's not right. Yeah. I mean, I, I can say that, you know, we, we have, um, I, I, in my roles, I've had opportunities to interview a lot of people, look at uh, a lot of resumes. And I think there's a, I mean, staying somewhere long term, staying somewhere longer than two, three years, I think it almost becomes part of people's kind of like uh, personality. Mm-hmm. You know, I leave every two to three years and I move or I, I move to another company. And I think it's real easy to kind of carry that mindset then mm-hmm. into relationships. Yeah. And I, I think mm-hmm. that's something that you're just not seeing. Like you talked mm-hmm. about, probably the root cause of it is is people don't like to grow. People don't like to, to have that grit to to take that constructive criticism, to take that feedback and then say, I'm going to get better from this. Mm-hmm. I think it's much easier to say, like, to have someone pat you on the back and say, no, you're right. You know, you should go. Look, some, yeah. You need to go somewhere where they're going to appreciate you. Uh, and then that's how you get into this culture where there's something better out there. Yeah. Um, so what are the odds that Taylor and Travis Kelsey get hitched? Is there is there a... Is there a pool is going on that? Is what's the over under? We need to look at the over under. <laughs> Are they even dating? There has to be a bet, right? There's theories that Let's she see. like secretly married her her like past boyfriend Joe Alwyn or something. He's an actor in Europe or something. There's rumors that they like actually got married and she didn't tell anybody. Uh, and recently like got divorced. But you're doing a lot knows. of air quotes. I like that. I, I do I like, like the my use air of air quotes. quotes. Yes. Yeah, that way it can't be Joey. quoted for something that no, is I know. It, it's it's just wrong. It Does the article safe. go into like risk mitigation? Like, what does a thirty-something-year-old person view marriage? Is it like um, a risk worth taking? Is divorce seem more of a um, easier road mm-hmm. route out? The yeah. like, and I think all of this is a great conversation for like us as an organization. You know, like eventually. <laughs> You know, like we need to be um, in the place of educating people, meeting them where they're at and how they're viewing marriage versus just, you know what? It's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just easier. Mm-hmm. I, I've been shocked recently of how many people that I thought were solid have gotten divorced. And, uh, you know, it just, it can creep up on you. Mm-hmm. You know, you, mm-hmm. you very, very much can be in a situation where you're just tired of the pain and you're just ready to go to a different place, move on, and you can tell yourself that it's not worth it. Yeah. And XO is about making sure you know it's worth it. Uh, so the world's wife carrying competition, I sent this to Taiwan just now. I'm going to pull it up. Pull it up. Uh, I thought this was interesting because the uh, the world that we live in, that there would be a <laughs> competition, competition where you carry your wife through obstacles um, okay. it, it was interesting to me, and w- Joni. W- where is this happening? Yeah, what? W- w- where is this happening? Pulling it up, my computer died just two seconds before. Yeah, well, I I got this clip from Joni. Actually, she yeah. she shared it oh, as she was sharing some of the the business office financials. She <laughs> <And> she included <laughs> a link to <laughs> the check this out. Yeah, it was an interesting. She said we could uh, rope off part of EXO 2024 yeah. for oh. the. I'm gonna go play it. What? I didn't realize we were, we were uh, under duress with the systems. I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't even called for the clip. No, I wanted to sh- show it on the screen. Uh, it's an interesting world we live in, especially since Instagram gives everything more life. I would have oh, never known about this. Yeah, uh, I love all this stuff. I'm, I, we're always sending back and forth Instagram <laughs> competitions or memes and stuff, and so I, I've never seen this. I need to. My my favorite one is are the the uh, the slap videos right now. Oh yeah, the slap competitions. What, the Not tortilla? between a husband and the wife. The tortilla oh. one. Whoa. No, 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 no. Whoa. no, it's it's. Don't worry, it's in Europe, guys. Oh, okay. Uh, We're and fine. So, uh, I. Well, let's check. I have a. Uh, are we good? Sure. There it is. Oh, all right. Here it is. It's loading. All right. So you put them on your back. So you got. Backwards. See if you can unmute oh, it. Oh my goodness. They were probably choking on water most of that time. <laughs> and then their, their, yeah, their, their faces and their husband's butt. And their legs are wrapped around his neck. 
And this guy looks like a Viking. He looks like he can handle he, he's himself. He's doing all right. Uh, this guy, but he's struggling. Spoiler alert, something's about to give. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> that is. Or maybe just some, some yoga pants, women. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh. So he's about to lose it. He can't handle the, oh. the pressure. Oh, oh no. Face oh. plants. Oh, he <laughs> ate it. He tried, though. He's and the good recovery? Up, face yeah. plants again. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and she's yeah. so willing to get hot back on. Just like, she's a real follower. He's crawling. He's crawling. Oh, this he's is important. Though. This he's is an important race. This is like CrossFit. The craziness of CrossFit meets, you know, I don't know the match. How do you the match even game. get people to sign up for this? Yeah. I mean, what's the it what does that ad look like? Wow. It's it seemed European, like based off of the audio. I don't know if we could hear it um, or not, but it oh wasn't English goodness. that they were speaking. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Well, obviously there was a prize at the end. Or I hope there was a prize at the end worthy of displaying your. Your wife like that. I uh, thought that was interesting. I mean, we, the world of XO, the, you never know. The good, the, um, oh, I just lost the word. The comment, I guess, why it's important to keep your body weight in check. Yeah. Like, that's the whole point of this video. That's true. That's true. Wow. But yeah. We, I, if you're I was joking with Brent because, you know, our XO conference in February, you know, Fellowship Church, like, they have this wonderful body of water oh, yeah. outside, mm -hmm. you know, of their church. And, you know, if we're just looking for some ideas. All I'm saying is XO24 come with your shorts because yeah. I think we should give some away. If you can run across all the fellowship with your wife on your back, you That'd should win pretty something. Yeah. That would be way, pretty yeah. good. Uh, we have to look into the liability of that one, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the lawyers and the insurance <laughs> companies will have to weigh in on that as well. So I, I really I felt today was important to get back on line and talk about Kalamazoo, what was happening, talk about the show last week. Again, we, we are all about celebrating marriage uh, biblical marriage in the confines of the world we live in today. It's very complicated, and I'm, ex I'm, ex I'm extremely proud of the fact that as a team here at XO, we are built to deliver content no matter what season of marriage you're in, pre-marriage, in the, th the thick of marriage, and if you're hurting, we have content for you. We also want to celebrate date nights, uh, celebrate the times whenever you want to be romantic with your spouse, whether that's complicated topics like oral sex or sex toys, which Dave and Ashley do so well talking about that stuff, or if it's conversations around wine or incorporating, you know, things, movies or shows into your marriage that you feel like might make other people uncomfortable, well, we're here to make people uncomfortable so they'll have conversations about it and make their own decisions for themselves. If you have a problem, please seek help. Go to your, go to your counselor, pastor, whoever it is, I do believe in therapists. I think therapists are, uh, are, are godly to have somebody in your life, a mentor, somebody that can speak into your life. And if you're a spouse out there who has a husband or a wife that is dealing with a addiction, please reach out to your local pastor or somebody, a friend, for advice on how to deal with that. I want to say all that to say we love you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of it. We do absolutely do this because we love you. We want to, we want to minister to your marriage. We want to help you. Like and subscribe. It's an easy way to support the ministry. Uh, tell others about XO. We have Lakeland coming up. Lakeland. We have the books right now, parenting book. XO Parenting launches this week, the in-law book. If you have uh, somebody in your life that would benefit from these, please get those, and we'll see you next time.